Okay, so in this given problem, we want to solve for QH min and QC min for this given problem right here. And so we have four streams, H1, H2, C1, C2, with their respected flow rate and specific heat, their supply temperature, their target temperature, and we can calculate the enthalpy change easily. And so let's solve this problem. And so in order to calculate the enthalpy change, it's going to be your flow rate times specific heat, 0.3, times target temp minus supply temp. So 0.3 times 100 minus 800, and you would get negative 210. Next, you do the same thing. So 1.5 times parentheses 500 minus 700, and you would get negative 300. Uh, for cold, it's going to be positive, so it's going to be 1 times parentheses 750 minus 400, and you would get 350. And finally, 1.4 times parentheses 480 minus 350, and you would get 130. You won't even need to use enthalpy change in order to get these two values, but it was blank, so why not? Next, we're going to create a series of lines here for our temperature interval diagram, or you could say heat interval diagram. So let's do that. So I'll draw a line here. I actually don't know how many of these lines we will have. It's going to be based off of this information here. But I'm just going to draw a couple, see you know, if I need to add more, I add more. And in order to construct this table here based off of this numbers, you're just seeing what is the highest temperature. And so just a quick explanation. So big T, you can represent it for hot, and little t, you can represent it for cold. Um, there's some small caveats, especially with this line right here, T min is equal to 10 degrees Fahrenheit from hot, and it'll be involved. So I'm not even going to touch it right now. When we need it, I'll explain it. And so first, what we need to do is find what is the highest number out of these uh, sets of eight numbers. And that is 800. 800 corresponds to H. 800 corresponds to hot. This line right here is for hot, and this is for cold. So 800 is the highest. So we can say 800 go, would go here. Now this is where this line comes in. T, uh, delta T min is, is equal to 10. So we can say that cold is 10 minus 800. So it would be 790. Next, what is the next highest number? The next highest number is 750. 750 goes here. This again. This line right here is all cold. Now here we subtracted 10, so here we would add 10. So this would be 760 to correspond to hot. Next, what is the next highest number from our list? Next highest number is 700. 700 corresponds to hot. So we put a 700 here, and this becomes 690. I mean, why are we subtracting 10? It says 10 here. If it, if, it, if it was to say 20, we would do the same procedure, 800 minus 20. Okay, so what is the next highest number? The next highest number is uh, 500. 500 corresponds to hot, so we write a 500 here. And 500 minus 10 is 490. Next highest number is 480. 480 corresponds to cold, so you write a 480 here. And... Uh, the hot would correspond to 490. Now let me add some more lines. Maybe, maybe we get lucky only two more. Um, and also this middle line, we can call it like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, I know the answer will require 7, so we'll do another one. 7. Uh, the starting one is like a 0, and that's the, the highest one, so you keep that blank. So there's seven intervals. Um, so what's the next one? So we did 490. Um, the next highest number will be 400, which corresponds to cold. So 400 here and 410 here. Uh, what's the next one? 350 again, cold. So 350 goes here. And this becomes 360. Finally, we have a 100 for hot. So this becomes 100. And this becomes 90. And now we will do some sort of interval similar to the last video where we, we use arrows. So for this H1, it says it goes from 800 to 100. So you can draw a little dot, 800 to 100, all the way down. This right here would correspond to this flow rate of 0.3. 
Next, H2. H2 corresponds from 700 to 500. And another thing I would do is I would write these numbers on the line. It'll make it easier to understand. Uh, because, like, we have 700 to 500. So 700 corresponds to this piece right here, this line right here, and the 500 corresponds to uh, this, line, this line right here. Anywho, so we'll just draw the arrow down from the 700 to the 500, and this corresponds to the 1.5 flow rate. 1.5. Now we'll do cold. So the first one is 400 to 750. So it's going to go up. So 400 to 750. And this right here will correspond to the flow rate of 1. And finally, our C2 corresponds to 350 to 480. 350 to 480. And the flow rate is 1.4. So once we have this piece of information, we will now construct a cascade diagram to ultimately solve for QH min and QC min. And so I just typed up a cascade diagram right here. And so now we will copy our temperature interval diagram or heat interval diagram onto a cascade diagram to ultimately solve for QH min and QC min. So this first one right here would correspond to 0.3 times 800 minus 760. So this column right here would be hot and this right here would be cold. So let's, let's just write one down. So we'll have 0.3 times 800 minus 760. So what arrow, so what uh, numbers go for 2? So we have a 760 minus 700, and it's for this arrow. So 0.3 times 760 minus 700, and we would get 18. Next, we do the third one. Okay, so 3, there's a little trick to it because now there's two arrows. So we have our first one, a 0.3. So we say 0 0.3 times, we have 700 minus 500, 700 minus 500. But now there's another arrow. We have this piece right here, and that piece is 1.5 times, we have 700 minus 500, 700 minus 500, and if you combine these two pieces, we would get 60 plus 300, so we would get 360. Next, same procedure. So now this arrow is no longer used. This arrow we used back to what we had originally. 0.3 times 500 minus 490, so we get 3. Next, we have 0.3 times 490 minus 410, so we get 24. Next, we have 0.3 times 410 minus 360, and so we get uh, 15. And the next piece is 0.3 times parentheses 360 minus 100, and we would get 78. So now we'll do our cold. Same exact procedure. So this one column doesn't have any arrows. And so this is simply a zero. Next we do two. Two corresponds to this arrow right here. So 750 minus 690 times one. One comes from the flow rate. So 760 minus 690, and that would give us 60. Next, or three. 690 minus 490 times one, and that would be 200. Next, uh, 490 minus 480 times 1, and so we would get 10. Next one, there's a little trick because now we have two arrows. So we get 480 minus 400 times 1, so 80, plus 480 minus 400 times 1.4, so 80 plus 112. So we would get 192. Next, we're just in column 6. So it's just going to be this number here, this error here. So 400 minus 350 times 1.4. So 400 minus 350 times 1.4. So 50 times 1.4. And so we would get 70. Um, likewise, no arrow for right here. There's no arrow. So that's a 0. And now we will get the value for this, 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 and so on. So let's do that. Um, the first one for this whole cascade diagram, we all say the first value for the top will be zero. We don't know actually what the correct value is until we construct the whole diagram and ultimately solve for QH min and QC min. And so let's calculate this value here, this value, this value, this value, this value, this value, and this value.
So this first one. So you say 0, the top number here, plus 12 minus 0. And so you'd get 12. And so the next one, same procedure. So 12 plus 18 minus 60, and we would get negative 30. Next, negative 30 plus 360 minus 200, and we would get a positive 130. Next, positive 130 plus 3 minus 10, and we would get 123. Next, 123 plus 24 minus 192, and we would get negative 45. Next, negative 45 plus 15 minus 70, and we would get negative 100. And finally, negative 100 plus 78 minus 0, and we would get negative 22. So once this part is constructed, you need to see what is the lowest number? What is the most negative number? And that will be a negative 100. And so what we want to solve for is QH min and QC min. And so our QH min would be positive 100, and our QC min would be positive 100 minus 22. And let me explain a little bit. So we have QH min, and this will equal, so you see what number is the most negative. That was negative 100. And so that's all it is. QH min will be 100, and QC min will be, so the very bottom, negative 22. Always the very bottom, whatever number this is. So right now it's a negative 22 plus the most negative value, the opposite, so plus 100. And this right here will become a positive 78. And actually, if you wanted to, you can construct a revised cascade diagram where this value right here now becomes 100. And you do the same procedure. So if this becomes 100, you say 100 plus 12 minus 0, and you would get a new value, where ultimately this value right here would be 0. And you're kind of doing this because this right here, we could say, is our pinch point. Um, and if you're not sure what a pinch point is, I would watch the uh, last video. And that's all you need to do to solve for QH min and QC min.